Your first Fright Fest. Tell us all about the experience you're, you know, having at the moment. So it's a good fun. My first it? Fright Fest, my first festival. I'm, I'm having just the most remark remarkable experience. Uh, everyone here is just so welcoming and lovely. Well, listen, let's go right from the ground up with okay. the film. Now, Ghost Waits. Now, so tell me all about the inception, the inspiration, and the whole start of it, really. Okay. Uh, we had spent, uh, McLeod Andrews uh, and I had spent a year trying to make another movie, and that we just couldn't raise enough money. And so I'd gone back to Cincinnati, Ohio, to kind of figure out what I was going to do next. That's where I'm from. And there, some, I'm not a video game person, but uh, some friends had a game that they wanted me to play, and it's a first-person haunted house puzzle game. And as I was playing this, I had them just in stitches. You know, they got their phone out and started recording. Cause, and I thought, you know, there might be a movie and someone like me having to deal with a, a haunted house. Uh, and so I started with that. And then there's a webcomic, Saturday Morning Breakfast Serial, where um, a man and a woman are talking. And the man asks the woman, what is the most American film? And she says, Ghostbusters. She says, Ghostbusters? How? She said, oh, yeah, here's a movie where you have demonstrable proof of an afterlife. But the whole thing is about building a small business and navigating bureaucracy. And I thought, well, that's hilarious, and I want to see that movie. And that's really the idea of being confronted with a ghost and saying, I have so many questions. Um, and McLeod, did he have any sort of like creative input into it at all, or how oh, did yes. this all work? McLeod is my best friend. I, he sees everything that, you know, the, uh, every stage of everything. And I, I, before there's even a page, it, you know, the conversations, uh, he was there, he was present through the entire thing. Um, but I do want to say uh, the co-story credit for Matt Taylor um, is a friend of mine who helped me. It, the way that it ends now was not the original ending. And I knew that the original ending didn't work. So I was in Austin for Christmas and he and I were hanging out. And I told him, yeah, I'm working on this script and I don't think the ending works. And he helped uh, the, the character of Rosie, the younger ghost, is he's responsible for. He had the idea of an all about Eve dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh, that's really good. And then um, the song, I had the song in my head. And some, like one day, or one night, I was out with my then girlfriend. And suddenly, I just had the image of the garage and the song. And I said, holy shit, I know how the movie ends. And completely forgot what else we were talking about. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> well, look, McLeod gives an extraordinary performance. I mean, um, yeah. you're a first time director. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you just sort of wind him up and let him go? I mean, how was it? Because he's my best friend, I lived with him for a long, for a while, and uh, during that time, we were working on his reel, and working on his reel meant watching, you know, everything that he's done, and I started noticing that because he is this staggeringly talented actor, um, everybody wants to see him go crazy, because he can do it, and not many people can, but it's always that. And so he's good, but I, I told him, like, no, you, I want to see you fall in love and save the world and everything. And so uh, I just, I had, I knew what he could do, and I knew what I suspected he could do. And I wrote this very much for him. You know, if he had said, I, I don't find this interesting, it just wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about Natalie? We'll play the other stuff. Uh, Natalie, I followed on Twitter. She's a great Twitter follow, uh, at inwalks. Um, but I, and we, I, I'd had to recast the role. I actually had to recast it twice. Uh, I'd written the part of Muriel for a friend, and then she got uh, cast on a show, a TV show, so she couldn't do it. And we, we had a local actress in Cincinnati, and we had to push production, and she didn't have those dates available. And so I went back to the drawing board, and like I said, I'd been following Natalie on Twitter, and she's just brilliant. You know, just one of those people that the moment you meet her, the moment, not even meeting her, the moment you start following her, like this is a real, this is just a beam of light of talent. Um, and I went to her website and saw she had some short films, some real, you know, she didn't have a really, a reel. And so I reached out, like, do you have something that I can watch? Because I, I just needed to see if she worked on screen. Because I had a feeling that she could inhabit the role. And um, sort of like how Robin Williams, you know, in, in a dramatic role, they would talk about him having to, you know, contain his energy and what that would bring to it. I felt like she would be the same way. Um, that because it's so sublimated and she just, uh, it's not something she'd done before and I don't think she's done since, but she really took the challenge and ran with it. Okay, what about black and white? I mean, was this just like a, a major like cost cutting exercise or what was it? I love the black and white aesthetic. 
Um, I really, I just, I just love it. I love the simplicity of it. Um, I'm a big Ingmar Bergman fan. It's just how I think a lot. And so I wanted to do a black and white, but my, uh, my UPM, uh, when we were on a scout one day said, no, no, you're not doing that. So we shot in color, uh, but we shot on two different cameras, a black magic Ursa mini and a black magic pocket cinema camera, which is a kind of digital 16 and the Ursa mini is a 4k and the images didn't quite match. Uh, we also did pickups. We had to go back and do some, you know, get, make some new material. And that I shot. Uh, Michael Potter shot the, the principal photography. And then I shot what basically is the first 32 minutes of the movie now. And it just didn't quite, you know, cut together in a way. And I was, I was doing the color correction myself. And I was driving myself crazy. And then one day McLeod just said, have you thought about doing it in black and white? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this later on the stage anyway. But I mean, it's one of the rare instances the, all four of us, like Ian, Paul, myself, and Greg, we all loved it. That's very oh, rare. It's very sweet. No, no, seriously, we all watched it. Yeah. And we said, you've got to watch this. And we kept them over. And that is unusual from a Fright Fest sort of like selecting point of view, yeah. seriously. And that's why we knew we had to show it. So, I mean, I feel very much like you. I'm hoping the audience really goes for it too. Yeah. I mean, I really want them to like it as much as we did. So, are you going to sit in and watch it? And Yes, it's the first ever public tr screening of this movie. You know, I'm going to have a panic attack, I'm sure, but I'm going to sit there. I'll, I'll be off to the side so that if I need to run away, I can. But I want to hear how it, you know, we've had some friends and family screenings and the, the response has been very good. No one has not liked it. Were you sort of stumbling through <laughs> it, really? I mean, when you were like, oh, you, did you sort of like, so a lot of it is more or less by accident rather oh than by gosh, design. Oh my gosh, how forensic do you want to get? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it very, you know, the writing, I've been writing for, you know, I, I guess I've been writing scripts for about 20 years. Um, and I, I'm confident in my ability as a writer. Uh, I, as a director, you know, I, I use my writing background. I know the point of this scene, I know the point of this film, I know the point of this character. So as a director, my job is to help everybody else focus on that point, you know, and, and guide everything to that so that the audience then, you know, yeah. you know can process the intent of it. Um, but as a first time director, and not even just a first time feature director, I haven't made a short. I tried to and it fell apart. Um, and I knew that I needed to raise money and I felt like it was irresponsible to raise money for a short because you can't really monetize a short film. So, you know, with, with how democratized technology has become, you know, we, we raised a little bit of money, you know, less than a Mercedes Benz costs. And just, you know, we just, McLeod and I just decided like, we have to do this. We have to do this and we'll make it work. We found a house, we found people who would come in um, most people got paid a little bit. Some people, some friends did favors of just, oh, I'll come over for a weekend and be in the montage at the end of the yeah. movie or whatever, um, or the family at the beginning. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was just, uh, in fact, when I cut the assembly cut together, uh, have, have, you know, everything that we had shot, cut the assembly, it was an hour and 50 minutes. And I thought I made a bad movie. Oh no. And the ending always worked. And so then it was just kind of, okay, well, let's start applying this to everything else. And it got to a point where from minute 34 on, it worked, but we didn't earn those first 33 minutes. And that's why we did the, the reshoots. Okay. Yeah. The, the toilet scene that everyone loves is an ad lib. The phone conversation was written. And then McLeod just said, I have an idea. Let's like, let's do one more. We ended up doing like six more because I started laughing. Mm. But he, yeah, he just decided to make the toilet talk. And it kills every time. That's is this it now? You want to carry on with, with you know, being a director? Is this, oh, yes. You, you've got the bug. You want to do it. I also direct audiobooks. Hmm. And I... Name a famous one you've done. I have not done a famous one. Oh, okay. No. Oh, well, then you can hardly call yourself one. <laughs> I, know, right. I know. I know. Um, but I love directing. I just... I have never felt more present and useful uh, than when I'm directing. Um... It, and and with the films, you know, we like I said, we spent a year trying to make another movie. Well, now we have a producer who wants to help us make that movie. Um, and that was really, you know, making a Ghost Waits, making a first feature at this budget level, uh, which is a five-figure, a low five-figure budget. Um, you really, you just have to show that you can make a movie and finish the movie and that it works at least at times. Aaron and Justin, we were talking about this with, uh, with Resolution last night. 
you know, Resolution's not their best movie, but you watch it and you say, okay, these guys know what they're mm -hmm. doing. These guys have a voice. And that, I think, is the job of a Ghost Waits, is to show what I can do and what McCloud can do. You know, yeah. Um, and it, it seems to have done that. You know, we have two movies now that have people that want to help us make them. And it seems, I think we get to keep doing this, which is like the greatest gift in the world. I'm the luckiest boy. Sounds good. Thank and you. let's wait and see how the audience are. I'm, I'm very interested to know how they react to this. It's I know, I could look like a real shithead yeah, if they yeah, don't like just it. don't I'm... burst out crying is all I'm saying. That's I it. promise nothing. <laughs> thank you, Alan, so much. And Fright Fest, thank you all. Ah, perfect.